Hey everybody, this is Redhead Goes Healthy and welcome to week one of Mindful Mondays. We are going to be reading James Clear's Atomic Habits. Now I know many of you have heard of this book before. Many of you have it on your bookshelf just like me but haven't read it. This is our time. This is our time to read a book together, to do a little virtual book club on YouTube. Feel free to read along with me. I've linked the book below if you're interested in purchasing it from Amazon. I said this before, if you have a local bookstore, go there instead. So let's just jump right into it. Each week, I'm going to be covering one chapter of his book. I think there's 20 chapters total. So for the next 20 weeks, we are going to finish James Clear's Atomic Habits. I think that's pretty fitting because this book is all about doing little tiny things each day, which all add up to a big thing. And for us, it's gonna be finishing a book. So I'm not gonna bother with the introduction. It is a little interesting. It's basically just like his background. It's worth reading, obviously, but for our purposes, we're just gonna dive right into chapter one. So chapter one is titled The Surprising Power of Atomic Habits. This chapter is a basic introduction to what Clear means by atomic habits, which as you can probably guess, are small incremental changes. It's all about the little things that we do. He says that getting 1% better every single day counts for a lot in the long run. He makes this great analogy with ice melting. So you can take out an ice cube from the freezer and put it out and you can watch it melt. It's gonna look like it's just taking forever until finally it just turns into like a pool of water. All it took was one degree for that ice cube to turn into a pool of water. Similarly, when we make small incremental changes, we are creating big change over time, but we may not see it. He calls this phase of our journey of, you know, wanting to make a more positive change, he calls it the valley of disappointment. The valley of disappointment happens right after you start something. For me, it's usually like maybe the first month of doing like a new weight loss program or exercise routine and the scale just doesn't seem to be moving, it, that nothing seems to be happening, and I am completely disappointed, and this is when I will usually just give up and say, well, I'm putting all this work in, but nothing's happening. So these small changes that we're making, which when we're doing them seem like big changes, seem to be just not making a difference. And like, that's when a lot of us give up. But just like that ice cube, patience is key. And I think there's a lot of value to this because when you're not getting that feedback, that positive feedback, especially if you're just relying on a scale to determine whether or not you're doing things correctly or you know things are going according to your plan, then more oftentimes than not, you are going to feel like you are a failure and you're going to give up. But if you're patient with the process, then eventually all of what you're doing adds up to something that can result in a transformation. Now, for me, the biggest takeaway from this chapter, for me personally, was his distinction between goals, like a goal mindset and a systems mindset. I don't know about you guys, but I live for goals. You watch the video I put out on a Friday for my first episode of Fearless Fridays, and I can't talk enough about the goals. Just It's in my language, it's in my vocabulary. I think about, well, my goal is to be a cal in a calorie deficit. My goal is to work out on my bike. My goal is to this, 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 and this. He's actually challenging me to rethink that. Instead of focusing on goals, the end result, the thing that you're striving toward, he wants us to focus on the systems that are in our daily lives. What does your daily routine look like? Instead of focusing on the outcome, we should be focusing on the little changes that we can make each day. How are we setting ourselves up to succeed? He closes this out and says, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. I would love to know your thoughts on this, on this distinction between goals and systems, if it makes sense to you, if you're gonna try to implement it, let me know down below in the comments. All right, I will see you guys next week for chapter two. <laughs>